Hello, good people. Emmanuel Sanyo Safali bringing you another episode of the Promise Insurance Show. And this time round, we want to conclude with the financial wellness talk that was brought to you in conjunction with UAP Old Mitchell and Post Bank Uganda. We want to thank uh, these, different, these two sponsors uh, for really making sure that they bring this rich information to the public. So uh, let's listen into the finance manager of uh, UAP Old Mitchell, that is uh, Tony Mujola, speaking about the claims processing of the company uh, for all their life clients. How long does it take? What is their promise to the public out there? So that uh, for both the individual clients and then for the corporate clients. So that will be very key to note because that will be holding them to account in the future. We're also going to listen in from Andrew Cabrera, the Executive Director of Postbank Uganda, talking about the convenience of fintechs. Because back in the day, people used to walk directly to the banks and you could not actually access banks beyond a certain time of the day. But with the uh, bringing on of uh, fintechs, technology into banking, we're going to see the convenience and what's the future of banking going forward. So with this uh, segment, please let's listen in and learn a few things and then get back to you after this. Keep tuned. But Tony, if I could come to you, uh, looking at what you are working on um, with uh, P uh, Post Bank Uganda and UAP Old Mutual as well, what are some of those solutions that you're putting up to improve the uh, financial wellness of the customers? Because we just don't want to come and save and you know have these products, but we want to see the value because that value is what will bring the testimony um, that um, we were talking about much earlier on. Um, thanks, Mildred. Uh and again, I think the, the bigger part of my work has been done, uh, largely through the testimony. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll but, issue uh, the check. <laughs> <laughs> but the that's it. Uh, two cases for me, just in addition to what Gloria said, um, come to mind, uh, largely from a testimony pa perspective. Um, we lost one of our clients, uh, I think last year. Um, we paid out about 900 million. Now, to me, who was signing, I was asking myself, uh, if this particular client had children in this cause and didn't have this insurance, how would they continue? But this 900 million assures almost a full generation in our Uganda to be able to study. Um, the other bit is, uh, again, um, one of our savers, uh, I mean, passed on, but in this case, it was very evident from uh, their beneficiary forms that they had school-going children. Um, now, the policies clearly indicate that you will be able to pay for the school fees of those particular children after uh, such an eventuality happening, but you will also be able to pay actually the actual maturity benefits uh, for, the, for, for that particular policy. Now, for me, I look at these two. Um, I said even myself alone, I cannot just sit uh, back and say, okay, uh, perhaps having just a SOMESA or um, a sure deal in that particular case is enough. You need that level of assurance. And when we are crafting these products with Postbank, so we have this diaspora community, for example, yeah. which has suffered so many ways uh, in terms of trying to invest back home and trying to just have that sense of financial security. We know for sure Postbank has done quite a bit in banking the diaspora community. So we've already uh, started that particular engagement. How do we have them on board in terms of uh, getting them insurance products specified for them? Then in terms of what we don't want really to talk about, which is death, uh, a client takes up a loan. Um, so for example, UAP charges about 33,000 for something like a funeral uh, product, um, up to a maximum of 113,000. So. I look at this and I say, if I'm taking up a loan of 20 million with Postbank, what is that so much for me to say, include for me this insurance? So that in the eventuality that I'm not around, my loan is covered, first of all, by, by UAP Old Mitchell, but also let my people not suffer because they don't have money to give me a proper send off for that particular matter. So that product is there. Then if you look at um, what Postbank, for example, is doing in the digital space, digital wallets and so forth, 
how do we make access in terms of insurance easy? Uh, so they have a van already. Uh, they have these uh, ATMs. How do we make them smart to be able to issue insurance? A number of discussions are ongoing, but uh, largely the, the products are what the panel has already spoken about. Uh, key in there is really just to ensure that the risk attached to investment of this particular person is fully covered, whether they are there or not there. So, so basically that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tony. And you actually mentioned the right thing. We never like to talk about death like we're going to be immortal and stay here forever. When you start a conversation about death, everyone wants to leave that. And yet it's a reality. Mr. Kavera, I want to come to you. In this day and age, we want convenience. And yeah, we've received a bit of that convenience for some time. And we've seen the introduction of, uh, I mean, the coming in of fintechs that have eased when it comes to financial inclusion and um, a lot of what the bank in actual sense where we would say that's the bank we move into the building. So how are you competing in this space as, um, you know, Post Bank Uganda, UAP Old Mutual and also in your partnership to remain relevant and be able to serve the purpose even when you have all this stiff competition that's coming through. Okay, <clears throat> thanks, Mildred. Maybe before I comment on that one, let me just go back on the interest rates just for a minute. Oh, yes. If you allow me. Um, Post Bank, we also have interest at 10% to hope the people who are impacted with COVID SME is up to, Julius, I think 200 million. Yeah, so the listeners out here, there and the people here who are SMEs, in case we're impacted and you want a loan which is subsidized, we have it. The government put there some fund. But of course, like we say, the information maybe is not... Yeah, um, it's not uh, out yeah, there. So, mm. at 10%. So, uh, we're a government bank, so we are really interested in that to make sure that people get out of the bad situation or no. But also, we have the agriculture facility uh, fund, um, which is... 13 and 15 percent depending on 12 and 15 percent depending on what you're doing within agriculture so those are fixed um they are not impacted by the cbr so the listeners out there uh, they can always walk into one of our branches or call our customer service center and they get more details going back to what you said about um, the fintechs uh, we don't look at them as competitors we collaborate with them um, around 78% of the population, like I said, is below the age of 30. So how do you get these people within the digital economy? You work with the fintechs. So for us, we are there to power these fintechs and work with them and we get more people into this digital economy because that's the market and you're able to see them. Talking about the insurance bit, which is pretty new within the Ugandan market, we are thinking about having heavy platforms and working with UAP to be able to give, you know, these young people also. Because if you have 78% of the population below the age of 30, it means that most of us here who are talking about insurance, we are just covering just a small bit. It goes back to what she said that, or Professor said that we think of saving in our 40s. No wonder that's the reflection. It talks to the demographics. So we need a powerful system whereby we are able to massively acquire um, these young people. Insurance of 2,000, 5,000, 10,000. At the end of the day, it adds up. But also the premiums go down as you have volumes. So you cover these young people in a way, but in a cheaper way if you automate. Uh, when you look at UAP, I think you send out agents. It's not sustainable. Agents can only work to Andrew Julius Professor. But if you send them, them down in Chikubo, they may struggle. So I don't think we have options. We need to automate and make um, take advantage of technology. Okay. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, you join or you are left behind. Our time is really la rushing out and it just feels like we've started the conversation. But if you have a few more questions, we have just a few minutes to be able to close off this. Uh, if you have some of those questions coming through, please uh, bring them on. I want to get this to Tony and it's coming in online from Emmanuel. Uh, on Zoom, who is asking, what is turnaround time for paying claims? Uh, Tony, if you would like to respond to that. Yeah, uh, thanks, Mildred. Just uh, to go straight to that. So 
claims are in a different uh, nature. So we have what we call maturities. Uh, so you, you had your full savings and then it ma fully matures. So that is m not le more than two days in terms of settlement. We have what we call a surrender. So someone comes before uh, the maturity period. Uh, so that one is about again another two days. Then we have uh, these that we call uh, normal refunds, uh, whereby someone has to really come to us and say, I'm not able to take up, uh, take up uh, this particular saving anymore. Um, but also that particular person does not qualify for a surrender. Um, so that one, again, another uh, uh, maximum three working days. Then the last bit is uh, where we have the corporate claims. Uh, corporate claims, these are the ones which come from the banks. Uh, they come from financial institutions, those which will require uh, a bit more information to be able to document. That's a maximum of five working days once uh, you've received all the documentation. So, so uh, give or take individual life claims, maximum three working days. Then these other what we call corporate claims, maximum five working days. Thank all you. right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, all that is actually in less than a week and we know just how how long a week could be depending on how uh, how much you want and why you want that particular money but i think that's a very good uh, turnaround time a few more questions and we'll be closing off this but as we do get to our um, closing beat i want to start off with you um professor samuel and also after answering this you could probably give us your parting shots we will have a hierarchy of needs in life. And when it comes to finances, when it comes, we were talking about a financial wellness class. Why do Ugandans look at insurance, including myself probably in the past? Right now I look at insurance in a totally different perspective, but I am guilty as charged a few years ago that insurance would come on the, you know, down there you just annex and add if it is to even be in the hierarchy of needs. Why does it feel that doesn't feel actually it is the reality that Ugandans will look at insurance as the last option, very, very last option. Thank you, Mildred. Uh, I, I think there are a number of reasons. The first one I think is uh, culture. For a long time we have lived communally. So we know somebody else in the clan will foot the bill for your problems. It's something we call a black tax. <laughs> I remember one relative uh, annoying me so much a long time ago. Uh, this guy told me he had a, he had a 14 year old daughter and he could no longer afford to take her to school. So he was looking for money to do Kwanjula for her. And guess who wanted to marry her? It was a reverend. So he was now asking me to pay money to, for him to commit a crime. So there is a sense in which this living communally makes people think that others are responsible for their follies, uh, omissions, their laziness, and so forth. Uh, so I think as we become more modern, some of these things need to be going away. But otherwise, people will call you and tell you, uh, baby shower, you have to pay. <laughs> Uh, marriage, you come and contribute. So every day somebody is asking you to contribute to something. So this black tax, this communal culture can really be a burden. And sometimes if you don't contribute, it's a problem. That's why some people, when, when there's a death, you get this problem that now you have to contribute to this one, the other one, and so forth. So that communal culture is creating a black tax. So, which, which prevents people from actually buying the right insurance uh, products. Uh, the second one, I think John, Jonathan has uh, alluded to it, is maybe we're not doing enough to educate people about the benefits of insurance. I personally have benefited so much from insuring that uh, I can also give testimony. I have had a very bad car crash and uh, old Mitchell gave back my money, you know, and I bought another car. So there are so many things that you can, you will find that insurance does for you. I don't know when I last paid the health, for health insurance. I just walk into the hospital and as you, sorry, I last paid a, a medical bill. I just walk into the hospital. But what people don't understand is that really insurance is pooling of risks. 
and uh, especially for health insurance, one, one of my parting shots, which comes before I even finish, is I think the government has done us a disservice by not making health insurance compulsory. Everybody must or should have health insurance as a must. That way, the cost of uh, looking after people, the quality of health care would really improve. We would pay our medical people much better. There are so many things we can do. And this has been done in other countries in this region. The last one I want to say, uh, and which we have been fighting, is an issue of trust. Uh, for a long time in the past, especially before we had better regulation, which we have now in the industry, a lot of the uh, companies did not pay claims. So well, we have had to fight that image and get it out of the way. I hope now people understand that, look, uh, when, you, when, you, when you buy an insurance product, you, will, you can trust the person selling it to you and they will pay you. But what happens usually is when people buy these products, they don't read the small print. Mm. So mm. when you have an accident when you are drunk, <laughs> and then you come <laughs> and say, insurance must pay me, you, you must follow the, the, read the small print and also follow the procedure. But these days, actually, insurance pays. And if they don't pay you, we have a regulator and the insurance association where you can go and lodge a complaint. Okay. So for me, those three things are really what have uh, been making insurance less desirable in the past. Perhaps the other thing maybe is the low incomes, but now we are, we are because of what, uh, the fintechs and so forth, we are coming up with micro products. So everybody can now start talking about inclusion. Uh, inclusion. Now, uh, the second part of your question was my parting thoughts. Yes. I know I'll not talk again. One, uh, it is never too early to start saving. That's the first thing. Uh, two, it is very important that even as we save, we increase our awareness of the different products that are available so that we create a portfolio of uh, create a portfolio of different savings. I think uh, Gloria said it very well. Don't put your eggs in one basket. Uh, and then from the other supply side, I think for us, uh, as the industry, as the financial industry, including the banks and the insurance companies and the uh, financial services companies, we need to improve uh, the effort to take financial literacy to the people so that they can understand what are the different options. Lastly, it is only in the dictionary where success comes before work. Mm -hmm. So when you are looking at becoming rich, it is something which is a lifetime thing. Sure. When you are looking at saving and being able to live comfortably. It is what we call a lifetime thing. There's a book, another book I love reading, and uh, the people here listening to us or viewing us, it's called The Psychology of Money. Can we all learn to play the long game? Success is a long game, mm. and you must be able to be in it for the next 30 years, for the next 20 years. That goes back to my first thing. It is never too early to start. So thank you so much for this opportunity, uh, Post Bank, uh, UAP Old Mutual, Bank of Uganda, and Uganda Insurance Association. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Gloria. I'll give you a few to give your parting shots. I wish we could continue forever. Uh, thank you very much, uh, viewers and listeners. Yeah, it's been a good evening. Yeah, my parting shots is that if we have been acting out of ignorance, let us... Uh, act on whatever knowledge you receive. Uh, my parting Bible verses, Hosea 4 6, it says, My people perish because of lack of what? Because, yeah, not because of uh, disease, not because of being, not because of haters or the enemy, but it's because of lack of 
knowledge. knowledge. Yeah, so let us act on the knowledge uh, that we have received. Start saving, have a plan, invest in your life, take an insurance policy. You don't have to, to bug people. Sometimes you, you, you find WhatsApp invite, graduation party contribution, as he has said, even bridal shower, what? You know, you, you, everybody knows, as I have said, before God knew you, he planned you. Yes. Even you, before you start on anything, you should have planned, okay? Yes. So if you are pregnant, really, how can your pregnancy be people's problem to contribute <laughs> for your bridal shower? That is Gender irresponsibility. <laughs> yeah, that is rubbish irresponsibility. And I don't know how I can call it. Who were you with when you were doing it? Eh? So before you form, plan. Are we together? Yeah, plan for, your, for the future, for everything you are doing. You, when it's January, know that there will be December. And so it will be Christmas. But before Christmas, there will be three school terms. And you know what your income is. Don't go drink all of it. And then you start running around, you see this, that one doesn't help when people have problems. <laughs> Get together with your friends and have medical insurance so that you can, a healthy body, you know your body is the temple of God, not so. You need a healthy body to be able to receive all the good knowledge. And lastly, use your time profitably. Yeah. Where you can, there are things which are important, but they are not urgent. There are things which can be outsourced so i mean you don't have to do all the things outsource the ones which are not core are we together mm. there are certain things you can outsource outsource what you can so that you can save some time to think and also invest wisely okay. when you're going to invest have proper knowledge don't just do it because your neighbor do it people even do wrong courses because they see other people doing them sure. thank you <laughs> He actually reminded me in my MA class uh, it is where everyone is going and this is an adult who is saying that John, I'll give you the time to give us your parting shots. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Mildred. Uh, and thank you to Postbank, to Old Mutual uh, for this great, great opportunity. Uh, and I get off, as I get off the stage, I wanted to just uh, say maybe three or four things very, very quickly in under two minutes. Eh? I, I think the challenge I want to leave with the, those listening to us and those uh, viewing us, but especially to my fellow insurers, how do we expect to achieve different results using the same methods? If you look at how we sensitize, if you look at how we disseminate information, we have done this for years. But we are still at a penetration rate of below 1%. I joined the industry in 20, 2005, almost 17 years ago. To date, and my seniors here can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if we've gone beyond 1%. We are doing the same the same things. Uh, and now this is where uh, the, the Uganda Insurance, Insurance Association comes in. What we now want to do, because I gave you the figures, I gave you the numbers. Insurance is actually growing. The uptake is there. The premiums are growing. So how do we move the conversation away from the penetration rate, which is stagnant, to the actual benefit of, of, of insurance? How do we break down that one trillion for the ordinary person to understand it. Because insurance in a way, uh, and I will tell you, contributes to taxes, pays claims, employs people. I gave you an example of just one single product we have at the association, which is a motor third party, where we pay 1.5 billion every month in taxes. That's a huge co 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 contribution. So if we can quantify insurance, and position it in such a way that people can understand the value we bring. My brother here did his investments on the life side. The funds you will collect, you will invest. We are sustaining uh, government uh, borrowing. We are investing in government securities.
we are paying people uh, we are paying uh, uh, people, people salaries. salaries can this be quantified so that members can know the value of insurance okay the value of insurance now the other thing i, I wanted to talk about is uh, the issue of uh, the information that we have how do we use the information that we have how do we tap into the power of data unless we can do research UAP will tell you the sort of uh, customers that they do have uh, on the general side on the life side what are we doing with that data to be able to underwrite better to be able to rate better how are we using this data how are we using government institutions for example NITA who has brought together the entire infrastructure of government into one space how can we tap into this power of data so that we can be able to make decisions as insurers and for me these are key issues and when I talk to my brothers from the bank and I want to also challenge you like I've challenged my fellow insurers in terms of where we need to go we are under a cash and carry regime but today what happens if my standing order bounces for example and I was paying for a life policy mm -hmm. and I penalized yeah. isn't that a deterrent to life insurance how can you use insurance premium financing and we negotiate good products so that the value goes to the customer who pays premiums upfront using an IPF and then be able to spread that across a, uh, over a period of time uh, in a manageable way how can we use the power because we are in a cash and carry you will ask all the underwriters they are struggling with payment of premium a huge potential for us and for you uh, 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 as bankers but also the other issue and as I conclude we must undertake research so that we generate information that adds value. And the, these things that I'm telling you and I'm talking about are high on the agenda of the Uganda Insurers Association. Because we've discovered that we must do things differently. If we want different results, we must do things differently. How do we generate information that you can use that can help us position insurance to be trusted? And the professor talked about lack of trust. Yeah. How do we generate information? How do we have partnerships with the universities to undertake research so that we can inculcate that culture of insurance early enough? The people who sell insurance and the people who work in the insurance industry, the majority of them, was, it wasn't their, first, their career of first choice. And I see many of them smiling. <laughs> so how do we ensure? And if you look at the panel, almost the majority are SCCAs, CPAs. What is it that the accounting profession did to make it so attractive. Because again, these, are the, these become our ambassadors. So for me, those are key things, and the UIA, and we are committed to ensuring that we pursue these sort of things that will add value to you, our members, add value to Old Mutual, add value to Post Bank, so that we can see the real growth of insurance. Thank you. Thank you very much, John, and that's very key, especially when you end up with research. Without research, I mean, what problem are you uh, tackling? What solution are you bringing? There has to be research, definitely. Mr. Cabrera, it's your time. I'll be giving you a few just to give us your parting shots on the conversation. Okay, thank you. Um, mine is, is a basic one. I believe in the, in the young because maybe for us we lost time so as banks and and you know um insurance companies let's focus on the young people we have a bit of a lost generation but um, we shouldn't lose hope let's focus on the young ones they will save they will invest they'll have better behaviors they will, uh they won't be, pay these black taxes professor was talking about so to me let's focus on the on the, on the generation just below us thank you all right, thank you very much. And this will go to Tony and Julius as you give your uh, parting shots. Uh, since the festive season is around the corner, of course, um, Gloria talked about this. I had my first Christmas carol today, and I'm thinking November has just started, and you're giving us Christmas carols. But what products and solutions do you have for um, the Ugandans who are returning home? There were some eh, about to come in these festivities. Uh, you could start from there and also give us your parting shots. Let me start with Tony and then to Julius. 
Um, uh, th thanks very much, Mildred, and uh, very uh, good uh, remarks from the rest of the panelists. Uh, for the Basama, um, you know, uh, this is a group of people who work so hard, come back home and want to have a good life. But at the end of the day, uh, what we are discovering is that, yes, uh, that money that you actually, about 20 million or so, I've actually seen them spend more than 20 million. You could actually come back the following year uh, when that money has actually earned you a much better return than even the country where you are working from. Um, so so uh, our colleagues in Postbank have already sourced in terms of the diaspora community. On our end is uh, we've already empowered them with the knowledge, uh, including the synergies in terms of strategic partnerships on how do we get them in, on board in terms of saving products, um, educational products for their children, whether they're here, whether they're abroad, it doesn't matter. Uh, but also just life in general, the same way we've uh, uh, talked about. But as a, a parting shot, um, and again, uh, Jonan speaks for the association, uh, which also includes us. So whatever he has spoken is core to what we as UAP Old Mutual as well believe. Uh, but, but when I look at, again, the same study by financial sector depending, uh, noted about the median saving at that point when they did that study was 4,800 liquid saving for all the people they 4,800 shillings, less than $1.5 for that matter. And uh, it just goes on to show you what Professor was talking about, about the blood tax. Yes, whether you have this money somehow, somewhat, you will lose it if you're not saving it. You will lose it. Then we have our colleagues um, who retire or get their retirement benefits. But then it, it's very well known that only 2% manage to keep it after two years. Only 2%, just 2%. So insurance is here to just be able to offer you that long-term view. Uh, it's been clearly articulated by uh, the panelists that if you want to get rich, it's a long-term long uh, game. It's not really just about tomorrow. But the final parting remark, I think, for me would be now to the, the employers and institutions. Um, as we are getting these young people on board into the employment world, can we now start fronting insurance as one of the benefits? You know, you get... Um, how I wish that um, years ago, uh, when I started work, I had been told one of the benefits we give is probably to sponsor you for this particular policy and this. I'd probably be having or already cashed out about 100 million or so. So, so we need to start empowering people with the right financial uh, literacy. Uh, uh, we have Madame Gloria here who could easily speak to the different employ uh, employers as well. But it is very key that we tap into the uh, young generation when they still can be able to uh, make these particular critical decisions. And uh, insurers as advisors are here, banks are here to just offer that. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Tony Julius. Christmas, yes, we want to talk about the goodies coming through as you gave us your parting shots too. Uh, th thanks, uh, Mildred. I think it goes beyond um, the summers during uh, Christmas time. Uh, if you look at the diaspora statistics today, Actually, most of the inflows are coming from the Middle East yeah. corridor. And if we are to tackle this subject going forward, that is a corridor we have to tackle and uh, ensure they have saving products available to them. Already we have a database, a large database for diaspora in the Western world, North America, Europe. But, but I believe, and those are the summers, the, the other group also needs to be catered for as well. And... Uh, We've been working with UAP to come up with standard products to reach out even before Christmas to a lot of these uh, customers so that they can start consuming these products. Uh, in terms of my parting shots, I think over 70% of Ugandans are below the age of that. And you cannot, I mean, people my age won't change easily. They think about brick and mortar and uh, everything uh, my friend Sam has mentioned here, it's not very easy to change their mindset, even if they are talking to bankers and so on. I, I think that's, I won't call it a lost generation, but that may not change easily. And if you look at a lot of the successful business communities, if I'm talking about Jewish community, the Indian community, they learn saving products when they are teenagers. They don't come, they, they, they don't encounter these products late in life. So I think one of the things that has, has to be done very well by 
both banking and insurance community is to start reaching out to the lower levels of society, the, the younger age, may, even below the age of 21, so that they learn these products. Because most, a lot of Ugandans who are learned and literate are financially illiterate, unfortunately. And that is where we are. So we have to save the next generation, the 70%, I think. That is where the work is. And I believe on the side of insurance, one of the ways, um, just to respond to Jenna, uh, we can uh, improve penetration is uh, because there is trust in banking. Customers come to a bank with a long-term view. That's why someone takes a five-year loan. They don't come to a bank with a sport view. A lot of the insurance cu customers have a sport view approach. So the fusion of banking and insurance, bank insurance, I think can go a long way in terms of uh, migrating actually banking customers who have a long-term view on banking to take a similar long-term view on insurance products and also build the same levels of trust. So I, I believe that is what will really be very impactful. And for the listeners, um, if you are in my generation and, and you, you lost the plot, I would encourage you at least pass on the information to the young generation. Enroll them, onboard them, teach them uh, investment products. Uh, it's not all lost. And your real success will be how the, the, the group you've brought up actually has embraced and adopted a lot of the savings products away from what we know, which is land and rentals, which is a very simplistic view on life. I think we need to help the young generation also adopt best uh, saving practices. Okay. I still believe it's not too late, but <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's time against us, but this conversation would have definitely continued. Are you investing? Do you have a plan for that investment for the businesses that didn't do well in COVID-19? Did you know that there is a 10%, just 10% interest rate, and you'll be able to get a loan from Postbank, and many of those are actually fixed. Uh, you won't have to think about, oh, what is the central bank rate, and then what is the next rate that the uh, you know banks will be bringing through it's been an impactful discussion and we can continue with this on social media the hashtags that get empowered and hashtag to ta uh, to now it's only time that is breaking us i want to say a, a special thank you to professor samuel sejaka uh, for coming through to you mr julius kaketo to andrew gloria my namesake here thank you so much for coming through that was powerful i think yeah we'll go in the corner and have an invoice for <laughs> mr tony mudo here he will be receiving his invoice and then to you John and I think it's very very true that we can't have a span of more than a decade and we have no penetration above one percent and yes and yet this is a product that we need to be taking up I agree with you that if it wasn't for health insurance not many people would have afforded a very good health um, health services so we need to think broadly about this and I think Mr. Kaketo is the one who mentioned it or um, Professor Samuel that government needs to be deliberate about having insurance and especially health insurance as compulsory that is very true well this is just the beginning of the conversations more about some of the aspects and the products that we talked about from uip old mutual or post bank that you would like to know just move to their um, offices and get all this information but for this particular financial wellness class we'll be waiting for another one this one comes to an end right here my name is mildred to but like i said let's continue with the questions i know that post bank is online uip old mutual is online so if you have those questions send them in the answers will continue you coming through but for this we bring it to a close at this particular point in time thank you so much for joining us god bless you and good evening all right welcome back from such an insightful discussion the panel discussion was brilliant the panel itself was very rich with experience with the knowledge and they were very generous to offer it really at uh, this could have cost someone a fortune if they were to attend a master class from such a discussion but we've been blessed by our sponsors, UAP Old Mitchell Life and uh, Post Bank Uganda, and the bank assurance element of it, talking about what is their promise to the public out there. I want to thank you for the parting shot they've given, all the uh, five panelists, 
Plaster moderator Mildred Raise, who brilliantly asked very beautiful questions. Uh, let's um, really support both brands since uh, they have actually come out openly to present this information to the public. I want to remind you to hope for the best while preparing for the worst, really. I remain Emmanuel Sanisafali. Till next time, stay blessed.